Welcome back to His and Hers Movie Podcast. This is episode number 26, where we will be tackling the war horror film, the rarely used genre of war horror in the film Ghosts of War. It is July 11th, 2020, and I am one half of your hosting duo, podcasting out of southwestern Pennsylvania, and joining me tonight, also podcasting out of southwestern Pennsylvania in the town of Beeville, my co-host Carly. What's up? Not much, not much. I just woke up a little bit ago. So, but I am here now, and we're recording, and it is pretty crappy out. And that is, that's about all that's going on. Not a whole lot going on over here. I actually like the weather out right now. It's kind of nice. I do not. I hate it. Really? Yes, I like sunshine. I don't care, like, I don't like super heat. But I like it to be at least sunny out. Sunshine. I'm your only sunshine. No, dude. What? That's not even how the song goes. How does it go? You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. <laughs> what? Uh, that's I'm funny. good. Yeah, I know. Um, but anyway, how have you been? How's your week been? Um, I don't... When did we record last? I think it's been like over a week at this point. Maybe a week. I don't know. I don't remember what day that was. Friday? Last Friday, maybe? Was it before or after I worked a million days in a row? Uh, well, we recorded last minute because you had to go to work that night, so... I think it was right before that. And then you worked that night. It was it was last Saturday. So uh, like oh, yeah, week. yeah. Yeah, so I finished <laughs> that week. I worked like... I worked like 20 extra hours over the weekend. It yeah. It was weird. That's horrible. Yeah, so I, not only did I work my regular like eight hour shifts, but I worked like 20 additional hours in the course from like, f- I think Friday on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a lot, but dude, my paycheck was like so nice. Like I probably got like 300 and some extra dollars. Jeez. Yeah. Um, I mean, I had holiday pay too, which was, Oh nice. yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, almost worth, like, it was weird because, like, the week went by fast, kind of, because uh, I worked 10 days straight, um, and, like, three of the days I did, like, either a double or, like, you know, four extra hours or something. So, it was, like, working, you know, like, 12 and a half days in a 10-day mm. straight stretch. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. It was like I was living at work. It was weird. I mean, I pretty much did because I stayed there too. So, yeah. like, I slept there. So, I did, like, live there for, like, a weekend. But it felt like the weekend was, like, a week because of how many times I worked. <laughs> yeah. But it yeah. kind of went by fast, too, because, like, you know, you work and then you go to sleep and then you wake up and you work and then you go to, like, it's just like, that's all you're doing. Um, so, I don't know. I got to. I got to work on, like, not working, not working, I guess. But at the same time, if the opportunity presented itself, I'd probably do it again. Um, so yeah, I did that and that was, that was something, um, it, at least it wasn't too crazy of a, of a work day. Yeah. yeah. Um, like it, of like a busy, like busy work days or whatever. Mm. Um, but, uh, what was I going to say? Um, besides that, I mean, it, it was kind of a basic week. Um, kind of, I was doing some overnights again, mm. uh, which really messes my sleep schedule completely up. It's like super bizarre. Yeah, I would hate that. I don't ever want to do that. I don't think. Like I woke up at, well, I don't know. I, I woke up at like 6 p.m. yesterday 
Mm. And then I went and hung out with you and we went and got sushi. And then I went to your house for a little bit and we started watching a movie and I fell asleep. Yes. And to the best. How long did I sleep? Um, I, I, think, I don't know. It was probably like an, an hour, hour and a half. And a half. Or, well, I don't know. Probably an hour, you, honestly. I allowed you to keep nizzling, so it might have been two hours. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. So um, I slept probably like two hours, and then I came home, and that was like 2 a.m., I think. Yeah, it was 2. Yeah. And I've been up ever since. Yeah, that uh, that sucks. See, I went to, well, I took you home because, you know, you, I had to take you home because we took my car. And then I got to back and I went to lay back in bed and I probably didn't fall asleep until 3.30. So, and then it was like 11 and you were like, you want to record soon? And that is probably the one and only time that you will ever be awake while I am asleep and don't feel like waking up. Yeah. So you should cherish that. I, but. I'm I'm in like a I was in like a weird spot today because I wasn't it was like 6 a.m. and I was like dude I'm not tired at all I was like maybe I'll be able to go to bed by like noon and because I'm going out tonight for the UFC fights and I know that I'm gonna leave at like 5 p.m. so I gotta oh. like I don't have I didn't have, I was like okay well then I have this show to do and I'm like, okay, I, maybe if I do it at noon and I'm done by one, I go to sleep from like one to like five mm -hmm. or like four thirty, and get like a couple hours of sleep. But now I'm in like a weird, it, I like couldn't time it right. Cause like now I am starting to get a little tired, but yeah. I could probably fight through it and, and stay up the whole night. And you know, the UFC fights are usually done at like one or two. I could do that, but I don't know. Like, I, I might try to go to sleep for, like, two hours. I don't know. I might get a weird spot. Yeah, I mean, I probably would because it sucks if you're hanging out with friends and then all of a sudden you get real tired. Yeah, it's hard to – I really don't get that tired with during the fights, though. Yeah. Because it's, like, so hype. I, I do feel a little bit bummed out because Shane won't be there, Um, our friend. Um, mm -hmm. So that kind of sucks, because uh, I was. It, this is like one of the bigger cards of the year, and and it would have been cool if he was there too. He's yeah. even been coming to the fights with us. Um, besides that, yesterday I drove around to a couple WalMarts to try to find um, some of the Scream Factories that I, I didn't have, uh, and I found Firestarter and Cobra, mm -hmm. um, but they both didn't have slip covers. But I just said screw it, uh, I'll just buy them. Um, so I got those two and then dude, so, uh, I signed up, I, I think I told you this, but, um, there's, I signed, I re-signed up for Disney movie club. Yeah. And it's basically like a thing where you get, like, there, there's different offers, but the offer that I got, it was like, you get, I think five Disney movies for a dollar. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's like 20 cents each. And then, uh, you just have to commit to buying three at regular price over the course of the next year, which is usually like 30 bucks. So it's more than what you would normally pay, but it kind of equals out in the end. Like you're still getting a deal. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, the cool thing is, is that the, this particular one that I had, uh, it also had like an additional offer where if you um, buy a title at half price, like ten bucks, uh, you it counts as your featured title. Um, it counts as one of your three, so you knock off one right away for ten bucks. So then it really equals out because you only have to buy two. And you're already at six movies, and then it also gives you like another option uh, to get like another title at like half price. I forget what the thing is, but it ended up being like twenty three dollars for I think uh, seven titles, and then I just have to buy two in the next year at regular price. Uh, so it, it really it, it it is kind of worth it, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, the the cool thing that happened this time is I, I signed back up in April and they've never shipped it. And I've called them like three times and they keep 
like I keep getting on the phone with dumb people who are like, no, no, it's because your credit card declined. And I'm like, no, it didn't. Cause like I'm looking <laughs> at it and my credit cards never decline. Um, and then finally I got on the phone with somebody competent and they, I mean, they're all nice. So I'm not going to say they're like, you know, mean or anything. They're all very nice. I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure there's a, I just picture Mickey mouse, like off camera, like off, off to the side with like a gun to their head, making them be nice. But <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, somebody finally was like, yeah, th- I-, I see what the problem is. Like it's some tech issue that like, it's kind of a rare situation, but basically like, that's why you haven't got anything. Uh, and then it was cool. Cause today somebody, um, emailed me and they're like, Hey, you know, you ordered back in April and you still haven't got your stuff. Just letting you know, they finally shipped. And since you got, since you've like you know, waited so long, pick, uh, any title that you want, uh, $31 or under, uh, and we'll send it to you for free. Ew. And so I was like really happy about that. Cause you know, I, I, I get a free movie and I decided to pick because like they, I, I, like it sucks. Cause like most of the stuff that I wanted was like $35 and it had to be 31 or under like the 4k star Wars are like $35 each. So, uh, those are kind of what I really wanted. I didn't want to get something that I could just get from the movie club because Mm -hmm. like when you do the enrollment, so I actually got something that I saw and I thought it was funny, but I got the Blu-ray of the hand at rocks, the cradle. (laughs) What the hell? Yeah. Cause, uh, Disney owns like a couple other studio, like, uh, what is it? Fox. So I think that's probably Fox, Uh. but yeah, so that's what I picked. That's funny. Which is a blind spot. Uh, so, you know, I thought that was pretty fun. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so um, the Disney Movie Club thing, uh, I've actually built, and you're going to make fun of me, but, like, I've I, my concept behind this was, like, whenever my niece was born and when she was starting to watch, like, stuff on TV, I used to buy her the VHS of, like, Disney movies, and I bought her a VCR and stuff because it's just cheap and at goodwill and i'm a cheap uncle um and she really liked the tapes which i was very happy for because i didn't know like kids these days if they'd have the attention span for it but yeah like my my sister told me she still watches like the original tapes i got her like the lion king and stuff Mm -hmm. um so i was like you know what i want to create like a big blu-ray collection of disney movies so that I can give them to her one day, but I, I, the more that I thought about it, like, I don't want to give them to her anytime soon. Like I thought it like when she was like five, I would give them to her. And then I'm like, no, absolutely not. They just get destroyed. But, um, hopefully as she gets a little bit older, like I could babysit her or like she could come over for the weekend or something. And I have like a bunch of, but see, I, I would have a bunch of Disney stuff for her to watch, but at the same time, I just want to show maybe like, maybe I overthought this because I should just be showing her horror movies. Yes. And also I think that you actually just want all those Disney movies. That has been my theory all along <laughs> because I've noticed she's not getting any younger. She's getting older and there's a point you have to show kids Disney movies at a young age. Cause you can't be given those to her when she's like 15 she's going to be like, right. these are lame. And right. I feel like that's what you're trying to, you're just like, oh, well, she'll destroy it. I got a few it. more years, like seven or eight. Okay, but I feel like you're always just going to be like, oh, she'll destroy it. And it's like, <laughs> well, she- I mean, I, here's the thing. Um, I'm not saying that I don't open them and watch them first before I put them on the shelf. Yes. But um, I'm reliving my childhood as well because I had all those on tape when I was a kid. And it's been fun i i you know what when i got the first package i watched i I watched a couple of them i haven't watched any in a while but i have probably honestly like 20 disney movies now that i've picked up for her Mm -hmm. or more and like Mm -hmm. honestly like stuff like the mighty ducks i did pick because i just want to watch those (laughs) yeah but like i got stuff like cinderella one through three which i haven't watched Mm -hmm. you know i don't i don't I, I don't like I, I've never seen Cinderella. It's I have no interest in it. There's three Cinderellas? Yeah. Ooh. I but, don't know if I knew that. Yeah, so I have stuff that I got specifically for her, so it's not you know 
I mean, I got them all specifically for her, but I'm saying like ones that I don't have interest in either. I just find it. I feel like in your update videos, you're always like, "Yeah, my niece." My niece. <laughs> yeah, because I don't want you people to think that I'm getting them for lame. yourself, which you are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because I'm like 29, and I sh probably shouldn't be having a Disney collection. <laughs> Dude, that sounds really creepy. Yeah, I don't when know, but like house. Disney is timeless, though, man. Like I love those movies. Like me and you watched um the what was it Fox and the Hound? Yeah. Yeah, we watched those like one day, just me yep. and you, in so the Lion sad. King, I think, right? Um. Or did I watch no, it no, we saw we saw the live action one in theaters. That's what we did. Oh uh, well, anyway, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I I like the Disney Movie Club. Honestly, it's it's pretty pretty good deal honestly and 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 oh the the final thing with that was i got free shipping for the entirety of my membership with that that code so it was a really good code and they're spent sending me a dalmatian blanket oh 101 dalmatian blanket can i have it uh no Oi. uh because i want it i like blankets <laughs> no um but yeah, so uh, if you've never, like, I don't know how many people are, would be interested in that, but, you know, it's, I think it's worth it. Um, if you yeah, have I mean, a niece or something. If you have kids, I mean, mm -hmm. that's good. Yeah, so. it's and it's fun. It's kind of fun to just pick all the movies, too. Mm -hmm. And they have stuff on there, like, that's, like, you know, um, Hocus Pocus, and they have the Star Wars films and all the MCU stuff, too. Uh because they Disney owns Marvel so you could pick like you could also get like you know all the different like Iron Mans and and oh, I forgot that yeah, stuff. Dis Disney pretty much bought out like every company there yeah, is so yeah. they probably do have every movie um of course there's Disney Plus now which I also subscribe to um and of course that that's going to get you most of your like everything's going to be on there so if you th this is just for physical media people it's really kind of pointless to have with disney plus but at the same time like physical media never dies for me like I i'm just a physical media guy uh but besides that um i also picked up uh finally uh i did it today actually uh, I had $43 in Amazon rewards points mm -hmm. and I decided I was either going to get uh, the first volume of universal horror collection from Scream Factory. The, the, they, I think they put out like six volumes, but they're so expensive. They're like 50 bucks each, uh. sometimes 60 and there's four movies on them and they're all old universal horror films, like not universal monsters, but like other universal stuff and they're cool they're really cool sets um but they're like i always feel i just feel like they're cost too much considering they're like old movies that are probably like doesn't they probably got for super cheap i don't know just set like some of their other sets are cheaper like the fly collection's 40 dollars, and these things are 60 and yeah like, i got the omen set for four, like 40 or 50 bucks and i just feel like the the quality of those are way better than, than the universal ones, but still, I, they're still cool sets. I just think they're overpriced. Uh, so I was either going to get that or the complete series of the wonder years. And I decided to go with the complete series of the wonder years. It was $42 and I had 43 in rewards points. So I got it for free essentially. That's pretty good. Yeah. I'm pretty happy about it. Um, I've owned the first season on DVD for a while. Um, but I can. I always wanted to get like the other seasons for cheap, but I, I couldn't really find it, find them cheap. I I got the first season for like six bucks somewhere, so it's not really that much of a loss. They had the first season at Dollar Tree the other I know, day. That's what you said. Yeah. Um. But so I got the full series for forty some bucks. I think there's like five seasons. I think so. It's under ten bucks a season. I think that's a pretty good deal. Mm -hmm. Um. And also, it's my favorite TV show of all time. I don't know if you knew that or not. I knew it was up there, buddy. Yep, that and Boy Meets World. 
Yeah, I try see I watched the Wonder Years on Netflix and then I got up to like the last season, I think, and then I took a break from it. And then I never went back. And yeah, then I remember you saying that you like the ki when he's a kid, like an elementary yeah, I... kid, better than when he's like a teenager. Well, a middle school kid, but yeah, I did. Well, he gets all the way up into high school. I know. Well, I got to the high school. I think it was the last season, like I said. Or it might, I don't know. I might have been in the middle of the second to last season. And then I like said I'm going to take a break. And then I forgot where I left. I think the last one I was on was when he takes it's an episode and he takes his car and his friends and they go to like a place to get food and then something goes wrong with the car or something like that <laughs> I, I forget but yeah then i lost track <laughs> that that honestly that's like i've always preferred when he's older oddly enough yeah i don't know when he's little i just feel like there's more emotion and more like i'm in a nostalgic feel to it there probably and it, make, is. it makes me it makes me miss when I was like twelve. Yeah, well, I'm so. old enough to where I miss when I was a teenager. <laughs> well, now <yeah. laughs> you know I've already been through the part where I missed when I was a kid. Now I miss when I was a teenager. Yeah. So, um, but I don't know. I grew up like what? Like I was a kid when, like. I think when did that show come out? Like eighty nine, ninety. No, I think it was like eighty six, and then went up yeah. to the nineties. Like went ten years or eight years or something like that. I remember when it was like re airing on Nickelodeon. I watched it like every night, um, or Nick at Night or wherever it was. Yeah. And uh, the for the longest time, like when I started collecting movies back in like two thousand nine, I remember wanting that on 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 dvd like really bad mm -hmm. and they had always said that it's going to be near impossible to get on dvd um similarly to the show daria because of the fact that they used so much music mm -hmm. in the show uh daria also was on mt it was on mtv so they used a ton of music uh, and Wonder Years used like really popular music as well. You, you know, like the doors and stuff. <laughs> so, yeah. um, it's like hard. It was hard. Cause like the thing about rights issues, there was no physical media back when like TV shows weren't coming out on VHS. Like, like you would get some episodes here and there, but they weren't releasing like full sets of, of TV shows back then they were like do like little volumes sometimes but they so that nobody wrote into the contracts like okay what like when we license your song for tv like it, it also counts for we also get it for distribution of physical media and stuff like that so like whenever you if you would go to like release it there's all these unpaid royalties so you have to like work and clear clear the music for like all the episodes basically and that's what was taking it forever to come out um, I'm actually surprised that it did come out. I, I don't think it has all the music, but it's like, I think they said like 90% of the, uh, original s music was still included in the episodes. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so that's, that's something that I, I'm super happy to finally have. I'll probably watch that. Probably binge that. Um, it's a good show. I, I I've always loved it. Um, and then... I also took advantage of the uh, Warner Brother four for four, four, four for forty four sale that's going on, and yes. I grabbed uh, two on a guillotine. Guillotine, I grabbed, buddy. I grabbed uh, Mystery at the Wax Museum, which I think is like the 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 first um, House or of the wax. second House of Wax remake, or like I think that's the first, adaptation. I believe. Well, I think the one the one that we watched. Wait, that's the second one. Yeah, because the, the that one that you got, I think, is from like the thirties, okay, and then the one we saw was from the fifties. Yeah, I think there's like six or something. Ooh, I, don't I know. see. I don't know. It's a popular story. Uh, and then I grabbed Innocent Blood and The Hunger, 
which I, I, I thought I had one of those, but I, I couldn't find it, so hopefully I don't. Yeah, I don't. And then I, I realized they had whatever happened to Baby Jane. I didn't get it. I forgot. Oh. I forgot about it. Um, and then what else did they... There's only like a handful more that I need that are horror, though. And, and I pretty much have every Warner Archive that's horror. Mm -hmm. Probably like need six, I would say. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I'm pretty happy about it. I, I, I love that sale. I look forward to it. Uh, I was going to try to take advantage of the Criterion sale. Um, Criterion are so expensive. Like, it's funny because a Criterion sale means Criterions are twenty dollars each. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> Which like, is too much for me. Yeah, most like of the time. normally a sale is like ten, twelve, sometimes fifteen bucks. But like mm -hmm. a sale for Criterion is twenty dollars because most of the time they're like forty or thirty. Uh, but yeah, they are really expensive. But I wanted to grab David. Uh, david cronenberg's uh naked lunch because it's a 91 movie um but it's out of stock so i don't know if i'm gonna do that i i used to hit up criterion sales and get two each time mm -hmm. but i haven't in a long time i d i do own some criterion but not a lot i probably own 10 maybe maybe 12 yeah. um i do really love them but they're just so expensive yeah i've never bought one for myself yeah. i don't think i have any because um, i am cheap if you're gonna get one i would say like one of the most important uh, like to get the like the three that i think are like your best options are rosemary's baby because mm -hmm. it's a classic yeah um the other one would be videodrome because mm -hmm. it's really cool and it, it, the Criterion did, they did a really good job on that one and the last one I think probably most important is Phantom's Carriage yeah I've never seen that I want to see that it's really it's like <laughs> it always surprised me because it's actually like a good movie not like good for a silent <laughs> film it's a good movie yeah. uh, and then when you factor in that it was made in like 1921 it just blows your mind um but yeah i have that one on criterion actually dylan uh from canada moods his buddy he actually sent me it for free one time Ooh, and rosemary's nice. baby i think wow yeah he he accidentally placed a double order of criterion titles and he gave me two of them wow yeah That's he's super nice. nice dude yeah um but so yeah uh I, I was gonna take it. Uh, the, they the Godzilla set that massive Godzilla set, is like a hundred and like twenty dollars. I, I was like half tempted to get to do it since I made all that extra money. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't, but I want to. But I don't think I'm going to. I don't know. You don't act like you collect all this bread all of a sudden, dude. <laughs> I make more than you, all yeah. the time. I promise. Right. Well, yeah. So that's uh. That's uh, the sales and different things that I was into this week. What about you? I was not into any sales this week. No. Yet. No. But uh, what did I What did I even do this week? Sanked around? Yeah, I stanked around a little lot. Um, no, I went swimming the other night with uh, my friends and after work. So that was nice. I feel like I can't get tan this year. And it's weird. Like, I could sit on the... Usually it's, like, a guarantee that I'll get sunburn and tan. And uh, it's, like, not ha happening for me this year. I feel like I'm still pretty... I am tan a little bit, but I feel like it's just... I'm not getting to that point of desire. But So I went swimming after work, and uh, it's been really hot out this past week. Uh, this weekend, there's been, like, a hurricane here, pretty much, so... It kind of cooled down, but it was like 98 degrees all week, and it was horrible. And you kind of had to sit inside in the air and hope to not die, so that was a little rough. Um, but other than that, we had Wang Nights, and we hung out last night, you and I, and that's kind of... It's kind of it, really. Um, I need to get back on the 91 move grind a little bit more. I think I'm at 33, man. It's I'm pretty bad when Jeremy ca caught up. I know, I'm upset. I'm scared. 
I'm at 31, but I don't, and then I hit, like, I hate, I feel like I'm spreading them out too much to where I'm going to, like, forget about half of them, but. Yeah, I feel like I still have a lot of good ones left. Yeah, me too. It's stressing me out a little bit, but I plan on, I don't know, I plan on, hmm. like, this month, the end of this month in August, I'll watch the most of them probably anyway, so. I'm in a comfortable spot right now because I feel like if, like, oh no, we have the show, like, in two weeks, like, I could watch enough to feel comfortable you know what i mean i already feel like i'm at that spot now yeah so anything going forward is just like a bonus yeah i kind of feel that like i looked at my top 10 and i actually like all the movies on it so far because i put them in order as i go along based on rating pretty much i and... need to do that because i don't i have no idea what i like so far I know, and then you sit on the podcast for like an hour before we start and put them in order then. but No, I yeah. do that anyway, I'm just saying. I know, it's a, you gotta be prepared for the show. No. But yes, I would like you to. Um, but yeah, I always put them in order, and then if I decide at the end, like, oh, I didn't really like that movie as much as I rated it high, then I'll switch it out for something else maybe, but most of the time it's like accurate. So it's cool. I kind of like doing it and then not really paying attention to it and then looking at where I'm at halfway through and being like, oh, do I agree or don't I agree? But I don't know. That's kind of the gist of my life. I haven't. We had some awesome sushi last night. That was pretty good. I love sush. Oh, I ate so much. I got sick. Yeah. But then, like I said, the next morning, I want more sush. That's just how not I am me. with sush. I'm like, I'm really? good on it. I, I pushed myself too far. I have five pieces in the kitchen right now, and I'm thinking about them. But that's all I did, pretty much. So, not the most exciting week, but you know. You know how it'd be. Alright. So, I guess we can get into what we shall watch. Alright, I'll go first, as per usual. Um, very short week for me this week. I honestly watched a ton of TV. Um, and like no movies, I've just been like, I kind of took a two week break from movies. Uh, started picking up here like the last two days or so, but I mean, there was like for this entire year from January till July, mm -hmm. uh, I didn't go more than like a day or two without watching a, at least one movie. And the last two weeks I've, I've went like multiple, like three, four days without watching a single movie. It's, it's been weird, but at the same time, I feel a little refreshed because I was getting kind of burnt. Mm -hmm. um, but I did, I, I did watch a lot of stuff. Like I watched um, another two episodes of The Last Dance, which is the Chicago Bulls uh, documentary. Uh, Michael Jordan specifically, uh, his final season uh, was it the ninety eight ninety nine season? I think um, with the Chicago Bulls, and that documentary is just so cool. Um, it really puts in perspective just how good Michael Jordan was. I remember how big he was when I was... You probably don't remember that, huh? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, because, like, I think he, like, his run in the 90s was insane. But um, it really was weird, like, because you don't really hear people talk too much about basketball. But, like, every like even when I was a kid, like, it was unavoidable. Mm -hmm. Um the the 90s ba 90s basketball was so much so cool man um and i didn't even like it but i knew players and that's crazy because i know like two <laughs> nowadays yeah um but anyway so uh yeah i watched a little bit of that um i watched a ton of survivor i'd probably say in the last like week i've watched from season six to I'm almost done with 10 and there's 13 episodes or 13 or 14 episodes per season. Damn. Yeah. I watched a ton of survivor in the last like week. And a half. <laughs> yeah. Um, season six, uh, was the Amazon great season. Season seven, uh, is Pearl islands, which is probably the best of the first seven seasons. Season eight is All Stars, which is a good season, but it didn't hold up like I remembered. Uh, and then season nine is Vanuatu, which overperformed my expectations from what I remembered. And now I'm on season ten, which is Palau, which is also really 
really good unique season uh but yeah i'm a huge survivor fan for those of you who don't know and uh back in 2010 i watched the entire run from beginning to end uh because i I had watched a couple i watched like the first season like some of it when it aired and the second season i watched some of it the third season i watched all the way through and then i didn't watch the fourth or fifth or sixth season and then season uh seven i came back and watched the whole thing and then season eight i watched the whole thing and then i didn't watch anything until like season uh like 18 or something and when 18 came out um i went back after after night i I watched all of 19 too and then when 19 was over and they announced what they were doing with season 20 which was heroes versus villains i went back and watched every single episode for so the first 20 seasons i watched from beginning to end and the 40th season just ended this past may so i figured 10 years later maybe it's time to go back and watch every season again yes and I started it before season 40 aired. And I was like, I'll try to watch all t- 39 of them right now. And then uh. Uh, I got to like season six and I stopped. Um, and then I took a little break and I came back to it. Uh, and then I watched a couple of episodes of season seven of Alone, um, which I mentioned that last maybe two episodes ago. Mm-hmm. Um pretty good um i'm just starting to get know the characters in the first two episodes so i can't really say too much about that uh and then i also tried to watch unsolved mysteries the new series on netflix but i just couldn't get into it i tried twice and i couldn't get into it and i loved unsolved mysteries as a kid growing up uh there's no host which is understandable um but i just i don't know it i didn't i could not get into it is weird did you try to watch it no i mean i don't really watch those types of shows myself unsolved mystery wait you might not have been around for that no i mean i that's been on forever hasn't Uh, it well no i mean the reruns might have but yeah Yeah, the original unsolved mysteries was like so amazing like everybody watched it like why can't you get into it do you think you don't like the story like what they're talking about i don't know i just it it seemed kind of boring like the the first episode i like just started and i couldn't pay attention i was on my phone and stuff i restarted it twice and i don't know i just i couldn't get into it I, maybe I'll try it one more time, but if I can't get into it a third time, then I'm just out. But it seemed like everybody else liked it, so maybe I was just not in the mood. Yeah, maybe. Um, and then, finally, for the TV shows, I watched uh, two episodes of The Twilight Zone, the reboot. Um, I first started with the... F- well, let me go back in time a little bit. When Last year, when the first season came out... Um, I instantly heard like everybody say how weak it was and I was like wow really that sucks like I'm not even gonna bother then and mm-hmm. uh, so when season two came out and I heard a couple people say oh season two started out way better than the first season did I was like okay let me just check out the first episode of season two because it's no narrative or anything so you you know they're just anthology episodes so I hopped into season two and it was called meet me in the middle or meet in the middle. Uh, it followed a dude who, uh, basically is out on a date and all of a sudden he hears a voice in his head and it's a girl and, uh, you know, it's, he freaks out and, sh- and the voice in his head is freaking out because that voice can hear his voice too. And you're like, what the heck's going on? Um, and it's like some sort of telepathic link. Um, and then eventually they start talking to each other and it's a very interesting dynamic because it's like, imagine if you were telepathically linked to someone else's head to where you could just talk to them whenever you wanted, right? In your, in their head, you just be like, Hey, are you awake? And they'll be like, yeah, I'm awake. But you're like nowhere near each other. You know what I mean? Like it's kind of interesting concept and they start talking to each other a lot and like they're they're you know it's like they're in each other's head so they they're constantly um communicating and they start to develop a little bit of a romance and uh the guy seems a little bit unhinged 
uh and of course it 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 ends not great i guess Mm -hmm. um but it's it's an interesting one that gets you thinking right away and I, I I liked it. It wasn't anything. I saw where it was going a mile away, and then even like the double twist thing that happens, I saw half. I saw coming a mile away. Like I called everything in this episode. Uh, so that that's a little unfortunate, but it, that just because you know what's going to happen doesn't mean that it isn't effective when it happens. Um, but it it was it was it wasn't like a slam dunk or anything. But it was okay. It was good. I, I like enjoyed my time. It's no like it wasn't as good as like say like the first three episodes of Black Mirror. Uh, mm-hmm. I thought all of those were phenomenal compared to this. Um, and then uh, so yeah, it, it definitely made me like okay, I'll watch more of this though. Um, and then I decided to go back and watch the first episode of season one, and in, instead of continuing with season two, and I was like insanely disappointed. I legitimately thought it was a bad episode. I'm like, why would they lead off with this? Um, It follows a comedian who bombs. He sucks. He's not very good. He's an uh, Indian. Um, And uh, he meets another comedian who basically tells him, like, to be more personal. So when he he starts using jokes in a personal manner, and then the person that he is talking about in the joke disappears. It's like they were never born. Um the concept that what i just said is more interesting than the whole thing uh it's just not good uh for one (laughs) like the jokes like for having a whole episode surrounding a comedian nothing that he says is funny or even creative like they're not jokes so it makes it hard to believe this situation and then you're like oh is it just completely supernatural like this so anything this guy says just because he's like because what like there it just doesn't make sense it's, it's just not a good episode it's boring it's slow it's long i didn't like it at all um i cannot believe that they let off with that uh the final thing i'll say about that is jordan peele as a host it, you know how like rod sterling used to like walk into this scene and yeah. talk, talk like give some kind of speech he, jordan peele does that and dude he is the essence of of rod sterling um he has the same aura to him and it's just really cool i really think that jordan peele is awesome as the host uh i like it a lot yeah i Um, saw the trailer a trailer the other day for it and i was i thought it looked he did a good job it looked like the old fashioned intro thingy so i thought that was pretty cool but i didn't really have any interest in this show either because i've seen nothing but bad stuff about it yeah um it's the fourth reboot of the or the fourth version of the twilight zone did you know that? Oh, yeah, because what there was an 80s one and then a 2000s one, and now this one? Yep. Yeah. It's yep. crazy. Mm-hmm. The original's, of course, the best, but the 80s ones, there was a lot of good episodes in the 80s one, too. Don't they, like, some... Did they remake some of them, and then some of them are original? Is that yeah. how that goes? Yeah, yeah. I, th- I think so. And I think this one even remakes a couple episodes. Mm-hmm. Dude, that's so weird. Like, it's a TV se- Who Who remakes a TV series that many times? It's so weird. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you one thing um, that intrigued me. So, on the first season, you can... CBS All Access has an option to watch it in black and white. Ooh. That's so, cool. I'm going to try that with episode two of the first season and see if it fares a little bit better. Mm-hmm. And I think the, I think the first episode is um the second or the sorry the second episode is i think it's a remake of the terror at 30,000 20,000 feet or whatever the gremlin on the side of the plane mm. which has been done in the twilight zone movie too mm-hmm. so this is like the third adaptation i think i think it's this it's called like terror at 30,000 feet or something so I, I assume it's a reboot of that episode from the original yeah so maybe that'll be cool but yeah that's all i watch for tv uh movies i just have a couple here um first up i did on the fourth of july pop in jaws um the 4k and i didn't make it all the way through but i did finish it up whenever i came back home uh on the fifth i didn't i i I actually just restarted it because it's jaws and 
you know yeah it's easy to watch mm -hmm. <laughs> uh looked phenomenal on 4k best it's ever looked um such a fantastic movie I yes. always just love. I'm like I'm kind of mad. I was actually off on the Fourth of July this this year, and I was gonna actually watch like like I was actually gonna watch Cape Fear and Jaws because Cape Fear has Fourth of July in it too. Oh yeah. Yeah, and it's a '91 move, so I was gonna uh -huh. kill two birds with one stone, I've, and possibly even want to pop in. Uh, I know what you did last summer, yeah. but I didn't end up getting too because i got called into work but um i did at least get to sneak in a little bit of jaws which i was saving the 4k for that special occasion uh and i'll say that you know the opening to jaws is like one of my fi actually the opening to that and i know what you did last summer i really like mm -hmm. um but it just gives me like vibes of the fourth of july um, but I never, did I, did, did I ask you this before the opening of Jaws, does, is it at night or is it at morning? I think it is the morning. I, I mean, I used to think it was nighttime, but watching it now as an adult, I think it's like, I think the sun's like coming up. Okay. Cause I couldn't t like, it's either the sun is setting or the sun is coming up. Mm -hmm. you know? I think, well, yeah, cause they're it would make they're at that party. You see them at that party late at night, and then or it they could go be sleep. like late in the afternoon, and it's about to turn night. Oh well, I'm pretty sure it's morning though. That's the vibe I get. I always get that vibe too, like that they they partied like all night, and it's like five a.m. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. So, um, it's just such a watchable movie, man. I just love it. I, know, I used I like, to never like it when I was a kid. I used to be okay with it, but now that we've seen it in the theater so many times, I think I I love it so much more now. It's become one of my favorites. See, I've always thought that it was, like, one of your favorites. No, like, when I was a kid, it would be on TV, and it's a long movie, too, so it was one of those ones... Even longer I would on TV, it'd be, like, three hours, probably. <laughs> yeah, I would only catch, like, bits and pieces of it. And I liked it enough, but then watching it recently, the few times, I really like it. But I haven't watched it at home by myself in years, though. Hmm. Like, yeah. I haven't seen it since we saw it in the theater, like, last year. Well, I've only owned it on DVD, and then I never bought it on Blu-ray, even though I know when it came out on Blu-ray, everybody said that it was, like, one of the best transfers um, I always was like, I'll grab it eventually. And then this 4k got announced and I was kind of happy. I didn't own it on Blu-ray. Mm. Um, but now I have it on the 4k and not only did I do that, but I picked up jaws two, three and four on Blu-ray. Uh, I had a little scare there because jaws two all of a sudden was costing like $50. And I was like, what the hell? And oh. I looked on eBay and people were actually paying like 38 bucks for it and stuff. And then just so happens like a couple of days later uh it got put back on amazon for 10 bucks because i was like dude when those <laughs> came out they were ten dollars each uh -huh. and like i just never pulled the trigger on them and uh i decided screw it i'm gonna buy all three of the sequels on blu-ray um and i know you just picked them all up on dvd yeah, because they had them in the dump bin at Walmart, and I've actually never watched part two, I don't think. I've seen part three, and I don't think I've watched part four either, so it's kind of weird. Part three and four suck. Um, part two, I actually like. I get what people say, how it's like a little bit slower and bo like more boring, but um, I don't, I, I've always liked it. I've always thought Jaws 2 was good. Uh, but yeah, I kind of, like, I'm bummed because I wanted to watch all those two. Mm -hmm. yeah uh, um dude we should do we should do a we should do a shark week uh, we should shark do a shark week? week episode oh okay okay we make could. it an annual tradition all right like we won't do it on the 4th of july but maybe we could do it on like you know, somewhere here in July. Or we could mm -hmm. coincide it with actual Shark Week. When's Shark Week? Uh, this year, I think it might be August, but uh, let me see. Well, then, yeah, we could maybe do that, because that's 
That is August. Yeah, August. We're going to do Shark Week August 9th. We're going to watch all the Jaws films. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, we are sharks. Yes. Wait, so the next year we have to... (laughs) So the next year we that we have to start reducing to like shitty shark movies. Yeah. Oh uh, no! I just picked up shark to puss out of the dump bin. No, so. that's why I didn't. That's why I didn't sound too excited because, like, I felt like Jaws is the only one I want to tolerate. There are a few good ones though, like the Reef. Um, that's really good. Bait is pretty fun. Um, I've also shark never really Night seen. Three D is pretty good. Hmm. There's a few good ones. I just don't like. I've actually never really seen many a shark movie because I don't bother with them because I always think they're not going to be that good. But I guess I'll have to now. Right. All right. So Jaws, obvious ten out of ten there. Um, and then I watched Baghead from 2008, which is part of the T Putts summer series. Um, this one is like a little bit like I've never heard of it. It's it's a indie film. Uh, it follows a four friends who are at a film festival where somebody uh, just showed their film and they're like all like indie actors slash f- want to be filmmakers and they're like bummed because like this guy made a movie and is getting some level of success and they're like you know what, we need to stop screwing around. Let's go to my uncle's cabin and we're going to spend the whole weekend making a movie, writing a script. We're going to, we're going to shoot something. So they go out there and there's this whole relationship dynamic where like, uh, it's a, it's a dude, a chubby dude. And then like a chick who is sort of on and off relationship with the, the dude. And then the other chick who's kind of hot, which the fat dude likes, the chubby dude um but the hot chick kind of likes the dude who is like the main dude so there's like this relationship weird dynamic thing uh and they come up with a concept of like a baghead killer um and then like but then they're all start seeing a baghead killer um it's kind of predictable but it was still it, it had good heart and it felt like the acting was pretty good considering like what the movie was where it's like um, sort of this, like, it looks like an indie film, but, like, it's also a bunch of indie filmmakers. It, mm-hmm. it, it got a, like, real indie quality to it um, that I liked. I thought it was pretty good. I didn't, I don't think it's, like, amazing or, like, top, honestly, I don't even think it's top ten, personally. I'm surprised Duncan put it into the ten. Um, but I gave it, like, a seven out of ten. Um, and then I watched Trick or our treat uh and i watched this today actually and i thought that uh it's part of it's 2008 part of the teapot summer series um and yeah it's amazing (laughs) i'm not crazy about watching it out of season i could tell you that Uh uh-huh but it is an awesome movie and the one thing about trick-or-treat that i always forget because I always think of it as this like massive movie, right? Because there's all these set pieces and the story intertwines and stuff. The movie's only an hour and twenty two minutes. Yeah, I yeah I know. I always think that when I watch it too. It's actually really short. It is so short. It is so short, but so much happens. Like there's no wasted time in that movie. Mm-hmm. I love it to death. Uh, I if it's not in my top ten, it probably should be. Um, because it is, it is definitely one of the best horror films ever made in my opinion. Yes. It is so good, dude. Like I love every, and the more times I've seen it over the years, the more I've just loved like the little, the little stuff, just like Sam, like Sam in the background of scenes and him just like the way he like walks and like, he's just like there. And I like how the story stories intersect and, um, still probably my favorite like favorite scene is like when uh the werewolves happen with Mm -hmm. the sweet dreams marilyn manson remix playing it's just dope it's cool but yeah that's a 10 out of 10 for me too i i i absolutely love that movie it is so good so good there's nothing wrong with it not a single thing i agree fantastic such a good movie 
Um, and then, uh, the last thing I watched besides my blind spot, which we'll get to after Carly goes, um, I watched body parts with you. Well, I guess I could wait for you to go and we'll, we'll do body parts at the end. I don't think you deserve to do body parts. Well, I do because I actually watched it again. Oh, I see. Yeah. I watched it when I got home. You did not have to give me two, but okay. Anyway, um... All right, so I shall go. I didn't watch a ton, uh, really, either. I kind of have slowed down, it seems, quite a bit with watching movies as well. Um, but I did watch a few things. Uh, first up, I watched Sleepaway Camp. Um, I watched this, actually, on the 4th of July, even though it's not a 4th of July movie, but it's a summer movie, and I just got it on Screen Factory, so I figured, why not? Uh, I love Sleepaway Camp. It is definitely one of my favorite horror movies of all time at this point um i mean it's been for ever honestly it's one that i've always enjoyed quite a bit it's just such a fun movie it's got so many weird characters in it and the acting is so weird there's just so like the whole movie is just kind of ridiculous when you really think about it but the thing with sleepaway camp for me is like the first time i seen it um i rented it from netflix dvd by mail Mm -hmm. and me and my friend my friend martin and stone his brother watched it and martin fell asleep and i actually rented ice cream man and sleepaway camp which was a great weirdo double feature (laughs) uh and when that end happened we just both looked at each other it was like scary as hell too Um, Uh but anyway like while watching it i just thought it was so bad i was like oh my god this movie is so bad and then the end happened and we're like it made it like worth it and then as i watched it more and more i like the stuff that was bad i didn't think it was like bad anymore i just thought it was like like unique like there's so many like unique little moments to that film like even like all the lines and like you know like, <laughs> like, like when all the dudes like want to go skinny dipping with the chicks and then they're like, they're like, no. And then the, he's like, whatever, we'll go by ourselves. Come on, boys or whatever. And <laughs> I'm like, it's just so weird. That and one then, dude like, wearing those short shorts the entire movie. Yeah. The, like, and, count, whatever you call him. And he's like, I remember him being a pretty darn good swimmer. Yeah, I think you a year every time I... Mean? I- and then, I think be, uh, like, the that. damn pedophile dude. It's so gross. Oh, he's, he's so like, creepy, man. It's like, the, then, like, the black cook, he, or whoever, yeah, I think he was the cook. He was, like, one of the cooks. He's like, oh, they're too young to know what you're thinking. He's, like, laughing, like, it's a, oh, this guy. Like, <laughs> right, he's yeah. Like, like, he thinks it's, like, this cute, innocent joke the guy's making. He's yeah. like, <laughs> And then, like, when like what was his name Ricky the cousin? Yeah. Whenever like, like he just flips shit. He's like fuck you, motherfucker. Like you know what I mean? He's he just is like hilarious, dude. And then the ants all crazy, and she's like, oh no no no, that would not be good at all, would it? That would not be good. So like, many people. When people are like, oh, she's like the worst actress of all time, because well, yeah, I mean she's not that good of an actress probably, but like. She was acting like that on purpose, I think. You know what I mean? Like, oh, she was yeah, supposed to be. Sure. She was clearly. And you see by the end of the movie that she was mentally screwed up and obviously for what she did to Angela. So, yeah. like, she's acting like that as a character, not to. Not that she's actually that bad of an actress, that she's going to act like that in every movie she plays in. And then you have, like, the weird thing with uh, the owner and Meg. Yeah, like. W- and that's and it just, creepy. Like, who it, wrote... Like, everything just comes up... Like, that's such a, like, small blip in the movie that comes out of nowhere where they're supposed to have dinner and then he's, like, so heart, heartbroken that she, and then she's a, he's avenging her death and thinks Ricky did it and he's, like, a grown-ass man just beating up this little kid. It's just so right. weird. And then you have, like, Judy and all her great lines. Like, I, I just think that, like, the entire movie has so many great moments to it and it's like I just think it I, I actually think it's great like it, it has like 
every every couple minutes there's like an iconic moment or like <laughs> something that's like stands out and that's so rare when you think of like low tier slashers like you look at something like madman and i know you like madman i do too uh-huh. but you look at that and it's like what really ha- like what unique moment like what standout moments are there in that movie besides like like two or three things like a, a 20 minute hot tub scene <laughs> you know what i mean like, yeah that movie i think that movie is playing itself like very serious and then this movie has so got this all this no 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 this is all serious all right it is though when you really think about it it's it's the whole movie is played serious it's just it's funny to us yeah i and, guess so but that's i'm saying like in general like when you dip down like of course you got your friday the 13th your elm streets your halloweens your chainsaws but when you dip into like the next territory you're like madmans and you're the burnings and and your sleepaway camps and your uh what's the one in the store intruder yeah um like this one stands out is just having like so many fun set pieces and moments yeah, I agree. And I agree with you. The first time I saw it, I was a little kid, for one thing. And my mom and I both thought it was pretty dumb throughout the whole thing. And then that ending happened, and I was super creeped out by it. And I don't even think I realized... I didn't really notice the penis, I don't think. Because my mom was like... I was like, what's going on? And my mom's like, oh, she was a boy the whole time. And spoiler alert. Oh, and, and then you also have like the, the homosexual like relationship of the <clears throat> father... Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. There's so much to it. And, yeah, like, <laughs> the whole penis thing, like, I didn't even get it at first. I'm like, wait. But then when you rewatch it, you're like, oh, <laughs> I get it. So that one's the one that actually died. And the aunt was crazy because she, you know, didn't want to have two boys. That wouldn't work. So, uh-huh. like, it, it's just, it's not so when you think about it. And I used to just think, oh, that movie just gets all of its success on its ending. If it didn't have that type of ending. Like, it would just be, like, another forgotten slasher film. But I, I don't know if that's true. Like, sure, the ending definitely impacts it. But even if it didn't have the ending, like, I think it would still be, like, well worth the watch. Just because of how how much weirdo stuff happens in it. And and the kills are actually, like, the the boiling water is, like, horrifying. The knife and the, even though most of the kills are kind of, like preventable and not realistic like the knife in the back in the shower she just happens to lean back and the knife goes through at the right time but i think that's a gross kill where it goes all the way down her spine pretty much in the shower the curling iron death (laughs) yeah that's good too all the yeah they're all pretty good kills honestly and you see a good bit of them too it's not just like cut away there's like a uh, arrow shot that's done really well yeah forgot us yeah there's so there there's a lot going for this movie honestly and it's become one of my favorites so uh that you was like a fun sleepaway camp four um i don't hate it as much as everyone does me neither i actually like y- you mean return to sleepaway camp that one yeah. yes yeah yeah i didn't mind i've only seen that i've only watched it one time and i didn't mind it i don't mind the sequels either but this first one is definitely my favorite the sequels don't feel Obviously, they're kind of doing their own Those thing. ones are the ones that are campy. Yeah, those are typical slashers, I feel, of the time where this one's very unique in its ways. But, yeah, Sleepaway I, Camp. I like the sequels a lot, too, but they're just different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you don't... Yeah. But, sleep, I give that... I, I give it an 8 out of 10 for myself, so... Yeah, I think I'm at, like, an 8.5. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But... After that, uh, I watch Scary Movie 3 because I did not feel like watching anything serious that night. And I just picked this up at, like, Salvation Army or something like that. Uh, but Scary Movie 3, it's not nearly as good as the first two. And honestly, all the I used to think all of them were equally funny. One, two, three, and four, that is. And I never really saw the drop down when I was a kid. I thought they were all great. But... Watching it this time, you know, it's not really that... It doesn't make me laugh out loud. The first two can still kind of do that for me, but this one's definitely trying a little harder, and the whole vibe of it and the jokes is very different, but I still find it to be a little bit clever in what it's doing, and when I do watch the movies it's parodying, I do find it funny, because I do... Especially with Signs, I think there's some decent moments in this film that are come off as rather funny, but... 
There's a lot of try hard stuff to it as well, and then you have, of course, the stupid. I can't stand the like M and M stuff. That's what I was gonna say. Like they're making fun of Eight Mile, and uh, probably you know you have like Michael Jackson. They just start doing a bunch of stupid, which I don't get because that does annoy me. There's so many horror movies out there. Why would you call your movie scary movie and then go into other territory? That gets on my nerves yeah, a little call bit. Call it pop culture movie. Yeah, pretty much. And then there are so many other crappy whatever something movies that came out around this time too there's so many of them there's even i I was at salvation army like i said the other day and there was a movie called the starving games that was essentially supposed to be the hunger games parody and i just thought this sounds horrible but uh yeah part three i don't know it's nostalgic holds a holds a place in my heart but it's not it doesn't hold up as well anymore um i give that like a 6.5 out of 10 though it's not the worst thing ever um then I watched Creature from the Black Lagoon because I'm supposed to do that uh, on Cinema Attack. Guest on that with uh, Derek and the gang. Um, Creature from the Black Lagoon. I've only seen this once before at the drive-in with you, actually. And I didn't remember it pretty much at all. But I think it's really good. And on Blu-ray, it looks great. Uh, I think my favorite part is when the girl's swimming in the water. The water just looks so cool. And black and white, when you see the uh, underneath shots of her swimming above, it just looks super good and super crisp. Um, And uh, it's a good movie. I mean, the creature itself, I think, is rather creepy. The whole concept um, of a creature that is human-like, kind of almost like a Bigfoot of the sea, in a way, where he walks on two legs and is pretty much a person just underwater i think it's a scary concept i like the characters in the movie and uh the music the music every time the creature pops up sometimes it gets a little bit old because it's just the same thing over and over again but i i like it because it's like trying to add so much more horror to uh every time you see his like gill come or his uh whatever you call it his arm his fin coming up it's uh adds more creepy effects but overall i like the movie i think it's definitely one of the best of the universal films we saw that and like i said yeah that's what i said that was like a few years ago it was probably like three years ago we saw that Mm -hmm. but that was a cool one to see one of my favorites too i would probably say like my favorites are um invisible man which we saw at the Mm -hmm. theater before um yeah and then probably like ghost of frankenstein or frankenstein or bride of frankenstein really i like all three of those and then my next favorite is creature from black again yeah i like i like the invisible man i actually like dracula even though people say it's boring i just like the atmosphere in that one Creature from the Black Lagoon, that's up there. I think I like Bride of Frankenstein more than Frankenstein. Most people. Then do. I like, yeah, I count I, Abba and Costello make Frankenstein. I actually thought that was a pretty fun film. So. Oh, yeah, for sure. <clears throat> but there's still a lot of them that I haven't watched yet in that set, so this gave me a reason to. So after that, I checked out um, Revenge of the Creature, the sequel. Oh, God. Uh, what? Do you hate it? I don't like the sequels at all. Yeah, I well, I didn't get to see the. I still have to watch the third one here, um, which that one's only like an hour and nineteen minutes. But I don't know. Revenge of the Creature, of course, they have the Gill Man captured, and he's like in a, you know, tank, and they're kind of just studying him and whatnot. I didn't think it was that bad, honestly. I didn't mind it. I kind of, I don't know. I kind of like how it's at least a different story in a way and it's not just oh the creatures back in the lagoon I don't, and I don't he's think attacking I like people. how he looks how the creature looks or how the how the creature looks buddy yeah yeah he looks he does he, he looks cheap and then I kind of looked at um just images of the third one and I think he looks horrible and that he probably looks the worst in that one just looking what's that I said maybe it's the third one then Oh, maybe. Okay. Um, but no, I didn't think he looked this great in this one either, though. He looks, oh. it, it, you could tell it's just a guy in a costume more so than in the other ones. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I didn't think the story was that bad, but it's just, it's not as, it's not, it's definitely a step down from the first one. I still gave that one a favorite. I gave that a, like a seven, but 
uh, you know, I'll talk about it more obviously on Cinema Attack, and then I didn't watch the third one yet. And that's actually all I watched besides body parts, so. All right, so let's go into body parts then. Yeah, body parts is a move. It's a 91 movie, and uh, of course, you know, that's about a guy who gets in an accident and he has to get his arm amputated, but the doctors are like, wait, we have this new experimental stuff where we can actually uh, do arm transplants and leg transplants and stuff like that. So, and we're going to do that on him. So they do it and the arm looks gross. It's all like stitched up on his body and it's working at first. But then he starts to find out that uh, the arm kind of have a, has a mind of its own and it was it belonged to a very bad person and he thinks that the arm might still have the qualities of that person. So yeah, body parts. I really enjoyed this movie. I thought it was super good. Um, really like the lead. You have Brad Dorf in there too. A good, just a good all around cast. Um, and yeah, Brad Dourif, I really, he's one of my top people to meet next to good old Reggie Bannister. Uh, and he's getting old too. Like he's probably, in, Brad Dourif's probably in his 70s at this point, late 70s. So definitely want to meet him. But anyway, yeah, I liked the story to this quite a bit. And uh, I like the main guy too, good old Dwayne Duke, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I think thought he was the... a good meet. <clears throat> What's that? I just said I thought he was a good lead. Who was the lead? Dwayne Duke, whatever his name. Jeff Fahey. Fa Fa I don't know how you say his name completely. Oh. His real name. Yeah. yeah so what did you good. think? Um, I don't know. I feel like I've... I, I, I don't know. I, I didn't think it was, like, bad. I, I, I thought it was pretty good. I just didn't think that it was anything super special i guess you hated it no i liked it i just don't like i mean i didn't really get the i didn't really get it that much like i mean i get that the like i don't understand how the body parts do that well i i mean yeah i i kind of agree like at the end when you kind of when it gets really into it at the end, I don't, I didn't, I thought it was a little goofy, and I don't think that stuff is really explained. It's all supposed to be just, oh, these are new advancements in technology, and we can, like, make a human, we can completely, uh, what do you say? How do you say that? Uh, freaking amputate, amputate, transport a human, it's like whole body into another human, and then it could be like they're alive again type of deal. But I don't feel like they get into that enough. That's like my one big complaint of the movie. Yeah, I, I've seen <clears throat> I've seen stuff like this before too. Like um, Stephen, uh, sorry, um, the Toby Hooper segment in Body Bags with the eye. Oh yeah, yeah. And then um, the eight like the eye as well, <laughs> where like the where. You, the you know the eyes transplanted and people see like stuff from mm -hmm. the previous person that's kind of right, cool yeah. that's kind of like, the, like this is a little bit um it's just weird that like the dude's arm is like possessed but it's not really possessed you know what i mean it, I, I liked it i just didn't think I, I don't know i i'm i don't feel as strong as maybe some other people do I don't know, I just feel like for me, like, if we're just looking at 91 movies, I thought it was one of the more entertaining ones. I thought that it was one of the easiest for me to really get into and pay attention to. Um, and I kind of like these plots. What, like, I'm a big fan of the eye. I really like that segment you just said. And there's several other ones where even stuff like the hand or idle hands where uh, a body mm -hmm. part is kind of possessed or doing its own thing. I, I, I enjoy that because it's creepy and... I like the look of the arm in this movie. It's gross. Uh, and mm. he's touching his wife with it. And I'm like, no. He punches his kid. <laughs> yeah, that was that, that made me laugh out loud. Uh, but yeah. no, I agree. I think when it all wraps up, I wasn't too crazy about it. I was kind of like, what the hell were they even? Especially like the final <clears throat> scene. I, I, unless I missed something, I didn't really get like, I didn't really get why everything kind of stopped. I, it's expensive. I get why, but 
I don't want to, you know, give it away, but it's just like it doesn't, it wasn't explained into why it was able to stop because of that, if that makes right, any yeah. sense at all. So yeah. that's, that annoyed me as well, but yeah. Um, I don't know. I, no, I, I dug it, it. It's a good movie. Mm. I like it. I don't know if it's top 10 for me, though. That's what I'm trying to get at. It probably is for me. But <laughs> there's still a lot I have to see, I feel. So we'll see. We will see. Yeah, I gave it like a 7. Oh, I gave it like an 8.5. Wow. I think you're fake. I think if you would have just watched it <laughs> with me the first time around and didn't fall asleep, you would have liked it more. Um, I could go to a 7.5. 8.5 is extremely high, dude. Honestly. No, dude. No, it dude. Really it's, is. My, it's my opinion. You can't even explain the end. All right, dude. dude like, dude. What? I, Sleepaway Camp. We're giving that an 8. But we, like, why I is gave one it part... an 8.5. Yeah, why is that a lot? Dude, you, come on. Realistically. I can explain the end. <laughs> acting well, well, dude. Even that's, like, unrealistic. Like, come on, man. That's clearly a girl. But... No, you're stupid. Anyway, 8.5 for body dicks. Now, how was your blind spot, or right. shall we say uh, vision, visually impaired spot, I guess, <laughs> for you? Alright, so um, my blind spot for this week uh, was overboard, and I was going to skip it, because I didn't want to watch boat movies. <laughs> um, and I decided, whatever, I'll give it a shot, and I saw it was two hours, and I was like, no, I'm using my skip on this. And then I was like, I'll just give it a shot. I'll, I watched 15 minutes, and if I'm not into it, then I will skip it. And Dude, then I uh, realized, can we hold up? What can we establish the rules? Like, are you if we're picking it on the pod, I don't think you should be allowed to skip it after the fact because then it's like a cop out when you get back on the show and you're like, oh, well, guys, no movie this week because I skipped it, or that we I don't think that's fair. Well, I would have just watched something else. No, you wouldn't have, because that, that defeats the fun of us randomizing on the show. Okay, well then I would have, I would have not did one, and then I would have did two the next time. No. Okay, we just whatever. I would just not skip it. Yes. Um, so I I started watching it, and uh, I was like, okay, lame. Kurt Russell on a boat, lame. Some girl, butt cheeks, nice, snooty, mm. annoying this movie sucks and then kurt russell left the boat and went home <laughs> to his house and i was like holy crap i've seen this movie a bunch yeah <laughs> <laughs> so my first blind spot was not a blind spot because i've seen it before i just don't i didn't remember the beginning at all like nothing resonated with the beginning but like all kind of stuff did in the second half so basically what it is is kurt russell is a carpenter he goes onto a boat to uh, install a closet for this woman and her dozens of shoes. Mm -hmm. And she, this woman's like rich and famous. I don't think she's famous, but she's rich. Um, she's like married to some other rich person and, uh, they're on like a yacht and, uh, she basically is too snooty and he used Oak on her thing. And she's like, it's supposed to be cedar. And he's like, well, you didn't ask for cedar. You stole me 600 bucks. And she's like, no, and she kicks him off the boat um, and doesn't pay him. So he goes home. He lives in a crappy house with crappy kids who don't, who are bad and uh, four kids. And basically the woman ends up falling overboard and getting washed ashore. They don't really say how she got amnesia, which is kind of a little bit of a cop out. They kind of like, are like, Oh, it could have been from the, from shock <laughs> or, and I'm like, I don't buy that, but okay. Um, and he gets the, he sees her on TV and he gets the idea. Okay. I'm going to get my 600 bucks out of this chick. I'm going to go down there, pretend to be her husband, take her home, make her do all these chores for me and raise my kids. <laughs> and of course you could probably guess where the movie's going. Um, he starts to actually like fall for her a little bit. And as she learns who she is, she learns to like love the kids and starts doing like a really good job at what she's doing and stuff like that. And you could probably see where the movie goes and where it ends up. Um, it's a good movie. I, I've always, I, I've liked it when I was a kid. You know, I, I used to, it used to run on TNT all the time. I, I've saw it a few times, um, but I probably honestly haven't seen it in 20 years. Probably. Yeah, I used to watch it on TV all the time too. Um, I'm so mad that you know this move, but 
Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> I, I didn't expect to actually have seen any of these, but like I tell Carly... <laughs> you shouldn't expect to actually see any of these. Uh, I, like I told Carly, you know, even though I'm a horror fan, I was a cinema fan first, and I have watched a lot of cinema growing up. Like, I've forgotten more movies than Carly's probably ever seen. Right. Um, so, yeah, I've seen a lot of stuff and some stuff, like, it, it, especially if it's from the 90s or before and aired in the 90s a bunch, like, there's a good chance that I've seen it but never knew the title, too. You know what I mean? Because I mm. would just, you know, you couldn't just hit info and see what you're watching back then. Um, which is such a foreign concept to kids today. Yeah. Like, I try... Like, I was working um, at the hotel, and somebody had asked me to come, like, help them with their TV. And these TVs that we have are horrible at, at, at the new property I'm at. Um, and they they didn't have... I think they fix it now, but they didn't have, like, where you press, like, info or guide and see what's on. Mm-hmm. You had to actually go to a channel, like, 60, and it was a scrolling guide. Oh, my God. Yeah. And I was, like, trying to explain to the people, like, no, it's, like, it, the guide's on its own dedicated channel. It's, like, that old scrolling guide from, like, the night. Like, I was trying to explain, like, what it was. I was, like, you know, it, like, scrolls past. And they were looking at me like I was retarded. Yeah. That's great. That's so stupid. Yeah. You make a team like that today, but. Right. So, um, no, I actually was really into this one and, and it kind of went by pretty fast. It drug a little bit once you, I, I think the end, the like last 20 minutes drug, um, mm. just cause you know where it's going and it just gets silly. Um, but the fun stuff is, is watching her with the kids and, and Kurt Russell being kind of a douche. I mean, he's really being a douche to, her, to like, this is like, this is like classic eighties, nineties type of like you it's just you can't do any of this <laughs> you know what i mean it's just yeah, he absurd. literally kidnapped her and then made his kids go along with it too <laughs> like yeah yeah it's and i'm like i'm surprised that it's like you know they do play it safe where like he doesn't try to like you know because she thinks he's her husband he doesn't try to like have sex with her like he he at like makes her feel uncomfortable but you could tell like he didn't actually plan on having sex with her luckily they did that (laughs) yeah what there is that scene he like tries to get in the bed with her and he's like man you love having you we love getting it on when i'm drunk or something like that right (laughs) yeah but he's just being a dickhead there right yeah yeah but uh yeah no pretty good for the blind spot um i gave it in 7.5 out of 10 Cool. I'm glad that you at least liked it. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it was cool. Yeah. But... Alright, so uh, it's your turn to get a blind spot. Oh no! Alright, so do you have a randomizer or do you want me to do it? Um, do you have one up? I forgot to pull it yeah. up. Hold on. Let us see. Let us just see. Alright, you ready? Yes. Alright, you have 13 titles left. And your title is what? Dazed and confused. Oh no! I'm scared. Why are you saying oh no? Because what if it sucks? It's not gonna suck, dude. I gave you great moves. I should use my skip. On dazed and confused? <laughs> yes. Use it on babe or something. Dude, all he does is stand there and be like, oh, this high school girl, they get younger and I stay the same age, uh-huh. Shut up. Isn't that what the movie's about, pretty no. much? Yes. Alright, so, you're blind, so I can't wait till it's my turn again. <laughs> really? Yeah, because yeah, maybe, you'll, like get bl- maybe I, you'll get a blind spot. For some reason, I like watching movies that aren't horror sometimes. Yes, well, maybe you'll actually get a blind spot. Yeah, I mean, I know for a fact that I've seen most of the room. Well, dude, yeah, clips on the internet. Yeah, and I've watched people review it where they go scene by scene, so. 
All right, did, well, you need to, like, you just need to experience the whole thing. Okay, I will. Okay, good. Um, all right, so let's move into our featured review. Next week, Carly will be hitting up Dazed and Confused, a all-time classic. Uh, and, yeah, so our featured review this week is Ghost of War from the year 2020. Yes. Got a synopsis on that. Yes. <clears throat> Five battle-hardened American soldiers assigned to hold a French chateau, 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 I don't know, near the end of World War II. However, they encounter a supernatural enemy far more terrifying than anything seen on the battlefield. Yeah, this is like Nazi-occupied France. Um, it was directed by Eric Bress, um, who... Let's see if he's done anything that I know of. Actually, yes. He uh, wrote Final Destination 2 uh, and The Butterfly Effect, which he also directed. Yeah, so I mean, Final Destination 2, which is, you know, pretty pretty damn good uh, mm-hmm. writing-wise. And then he also wrote The Butterfly Effect, which is also really good. And he wrote the Final Destination as well, which, eh, you know, whatever. But he directed The Butterfly Effect, which is a great movie. So this is the first film he directed since The Butterfly Effect. Yes. That's crazy. That's a long time. Right, it is. Um, so yeah, it. you gave the synopsis already, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so yeah, I think that this movie, the interesting thing about it is that it's a war horror film. So it's set in World War II. And it follows a group of soldiers who uh, basically have to uh, stand guard at a French, like, uh, mansion of sorts. Uh, Mm -hmm. And they're basically haunted and harassed by ghosts there. And they believe that it's because the Nazis um, had, like, murdered some of the family who uh, were helping uh, Jews... um, escape i think they were putting them in the walls and stuff like that they were hiding them out um so the the nazis like murdered them brutally and stuff and and now since their bodies haven't been properly buried they are being um basically you know haunted Mm. uh and yeah so the movie opens up and it, it definitely is a little rough around the edges uh, because, it, like, for one, it sounds like the, I don't know, it sounded like the audio was a little bit off. Like, where they were out in the, like, bush, or like, you know, wherever they were, like, outside, it, it when during the outside scenes. It sounded like the audio, like the ADR, was, sounded like they were in, like, a sound stage or something. Mm-hmm. I didn't like that. The the audio quality wasn't that great with the dialogue. And then um, there is like a really rough CGI scene early. uh, Yeah. With like a a kill of a Nazi. And I just, as soon as I saw it, I was like, you know what? Like the moment you looked at that, you should have known just cut away. Like we don't need to show a kill here. Like if that's what we're going to get out of it let's just cut away whenever we uh, shoot the Nazi. Just cut away. Because mm-hmm. it, it's so bad that it, it really does take you out of the movie and and make you realize that you're watching a movie. Um, mm-hmm. In a serious movie like this, you cannot have that bad of a CGI scene. Um, I would much rather cut and not show any gore. Just cut away. Because it, it's just not worth it. You're yeah, because it's one thing. Audience. It's one thing if it was like the ghost or something like that, but it's a simple scene of just like shooting someone in the head. You don't have to show blood there or anything, right? It's like, an, like you said, it's a serious moment. So, you, what's the point? It's not. It's going to be a, more effective to not show it. Yeah, I mean, it'd be <clears> more <throat> effective if you showed something good, but if it's looks oh, that yeah. bad, um, just cut away. Um, besides that though, I didn't really have any other problems early on. Um, I thought that like some of the war aspects, you know, the, the, there's some like actual good shots here, like some good shots, 
um Mm -hmm. the when the dude's like sleeping on the ground and he sees the the shadow person and them light up a cigar and he like smoking in distance that's like a nice scary intense scene um and then there were a few jump scares that got me too um later in the film now the the ghosts themselves kind of remind you a little bit of like a conjuring esque style ghost, but not as good. Like, mm-hmm. like, like, basically, like almost like a knockoff of one of those. Um, and it's a little bit unfortunate because it, it doesn't work fully. But at the same time, I don't think it doesn't work at all. Yeah, I don't know. That was kind of my biggest problem. Was like, I knew this was going to be a haunting type of film, uh, and I didn't mind that. It actually kind of reminded me of a movie I just had to watch for 2004 called R Point. And that was uh, a Korean ghostly war film where they kind of go to the this you base. You both use ghostly the wrong way, by the way. Just letting you know. Okay, that was kind of rude, but go ahead. <laughs> T- let me know why. A ghostly movie is not just a movie with a ghost in it. A ghostly movie is a specific bad-looking ghost movie that you would see at Walmart. Yeah, okay, dude. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Okay, dude, I was just saying ghost... I wasn't using that paranormal there, dude. I'm <laughs> bad at... I can't pronounce that word that well. But anyway, I'm saying this reminded me a little bit of that film, and I enjoyed that movie, uh, but uh, that one didn't show as much, and this one, you know, they're showing the ghost, and honestly, the jump scares didn't really get me. Um, Were you into the movie? Were you paying attention the whole time? Yes. No, you weren't. No. Yeah. Dude, that, I, <laughs> no, I, I, no. I, like, dude, honestly, there's <laughs> one ghost scare, jump scare. It's like right. At, it's like one of the first ones in the house. Like, if you're paying attention, it you're it's gonna get you because it, you just don't expect it, and it, it, it like it. Yeah. I actually jumped. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> I feel like I I think I know what one you're talking about, and I feel like I was paying attention, and I feel that. See, I like there's there's moments in the movie that are creepy where they see like a shadow or something. And I like that type of creepiness. They see a shadow and then they open a door or something and it's gone. And they're like, did you just see that? Yeah, am I crazy? I like that scare effect. I don't like this movie took the we're going to show actual human formed ghosts coming at them type of thing. Because I thought I just thought the effects and the CG was pretty bad on them. Uh not the worst I've ever seen, but it just takes it out because it's like a... When I see a war movie that's supposed to be a scary movie, I expect it to be more serious, and I find that the ghost effect just didn't work that well in this movie. It felt like it starts out like a solid atmospheric war movie, and then it turns into a ghostly. Yes, a ghostly. Um, Yeah, there's some, there's some nice scenes uh, early on, like of um i don't know like just the setting like the france um yeah i agree you know backdrop and stuff which i don't think it's shot in france at all but um one of the movies that i loved from the last couple years was overlord Mm -hmm. which is also set in world war ii nazi occupied france right uh and i think that movie has like great 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 set pieces and atmosphere it just looks really cool um this one is like that on a way smaller scale, way smaller budget and stuff like that. But I, I felt like it, the characters, I will say that the characters really did kind of still feel like they were, you know, old, like from World War II. Um, mm-hmm. They did a good job with that. Um, not a ton of character development, a little bit there. Um there was some cool stuff like with the cat's cradle thing, which I didn't even know was a real thing. I, I actually looked it up. I was like, what is cat's cradle? It's a game, huh? That's weird. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, there's some, there's some creepy stuff. Uh, the story goes in a really weird place at the end though. Like I really didn't expect anything like that. Um, did you, did you like the ending or I did. I liked it in a way that it, like, I thought it was bull crap, like a little mm-hmm. bit. But at the same time, in this movie, whatever that, let's just pretend that, that you know that exists or whatever. But, um, I just I I thought that I just thought it was kind of interesting. Honestly, I just thought it was like different. It was like 
it was different enough to where I respected that they just tried to do something different and didn't end like a traditional ghost movie and mm-hmm. just went like completely out in the left field. So I respected it for that and I, I didn't mind the ending at all. I thought it was kind of cool, even though a little bit of it was kind of ridiculous. Um, overall, though, I actually really liked this movie. I thought that it, you know, I thought it was a it's not the best war horror film but it's not the worst that i've seen either and it gives me hope that like we could get some more good war horror films because i do love the concept of war and horror together i feel like sometimes the the one thing that doesn't happen that often with war horror films is the marrying of the atrocities of war with horror right yeah because like it's like there's you can work with the horrible the hor- the real world horror of war and like the horror of a horror movie i feel like they 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 don't add the commentary in there uh with any of them really you know what i mean and and that kind of sucks mm-hmm. um there's a pretty good one from uh set in world war 1 I, I believe called death watch uh from 2002 that's a pretty cool one um, but yeah, uh, there's, there's, I've seen a handful of them and, uh, like there's some like loose war horror ones, like, um, death dream from Bob Clark, uh, which is like, has no scenes in the war, but it's post-traumatic stress disorder from a guy mm-hmm. from Vietnam. Like that one's cool, but I wouldn't, it's not like war, you know, it's just war yeah. related. Um, obviously overlord is is a good one dog soldiers is a good one um there's a couple of nazi zombie ones like dead snow and uh outpost but there's really not a whole lot of them i wish there were more yeah i mean i'm coming to enjoy that whole thing with this movie i enjoyed all the war stuff and i thought the characters were all decent in the film uh pretty much all that i liked and then as i said at the beginning you get more atmospheric type of moments and creepy moments with just shadows and uh something seems not right with this place i like all that stuff but i just felt that the ghost when they actually get the ghost up in it and it's like becomes kind of jump scarish and uh more visual that kind of killed it a little bit for me and the whole ending I, I have mixed feelings because I do agree. I thought it was cool that they went a different route than the typical ghost story ending and that's it. But I don't really know if I liked how it wrapped up because it was uh, completely unrealistic. But yeah, I'm just kind of okay with this movie. That's how I feel on it. I'm kind of lukewarm. Oh, yeah? Yes. Oh, yeah. All right, let's get into ratings. All right. Um... I guess I can go first. Uh, I gave it a 7 out of 10. I mean, I didn't think it was bad by any means, but it was kind of a little bit disappointing for me, I guess. I expected a little bit something different, I guess. I gave it a 6.5 out of 10. What the hell? (laughs) What? Never mind. I give it a (laughs) 5. What? Now I feel stupid. I just like came down on it, and then I gave it a higher rating than you, and I feel dumb. Well, why'd you do that? Because I was being generous, I guess. I'm always generous with my ratings, you know? I know, but I'm just saying, like, I'm trying to be more... I don't know. I I, I feel like last year I rated way too high on stuff. You're setting so. me up, dude. You act like you loved this when we were talking about it. I loved it. I don't think it's good. I don't think it's that good. I did like it a lot, but I don't think it's that good. That's the problem. I'm sick of you. But anyway, okay, fine. I will stick with my... I will give it a 7 because that would be real of me. So, whatever. Yeah, I'm kind of 6.57 territory. I don't know. I, I could go either way. Um, I, I was just thinking of, like, other war horror movies. And Overlord might actually be the best one. It's kind of crazy. It really encapsulates, like, the war aspect. You should watch Our Point. I would be curious to see what you thought. Is I think it's about the... horror? I just mentioned it a little bit ago. Yes! Okay. I was comparing. I was comparing this movie to it. I it's thought like you were a, just comparing it to like the ghost aspect. I didn't know that. There no, was it was it was like it was like I think it's the Vietnam War that they're in. Yeah, Overlord. Um, well, is it a Korean film? 
Uh, wait, yeah. Maybe it's the Korean War. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, I am looking it up. It is, yeah, it's the South Korean War, set yeah. in Vietnam 1972 during the Vietnam War. Oh, so it is Vietnam. So, yeah, screw you, yes. Okay. Um, Overlord uh, is probably one of the best. Um, there's Frankenstein's Army, The Objective, which I haven't seen, The Keep, which I have seen, uh. Outpost, which is all right. It's like Nazi ghosts. Um, the Devil's Rock, never seen, Jacob's Ladder, of course, that's some good stuff below which i don't really care for mm -hmm. um death dream which is probably one of the better ones but again it's more ptsd uh war of the dead i've never seen trench 11 i've never seen okanaba o o oni baba never seen that one king of zombies devil's backbone again that's to me not really like war uh yeah. Ra ravenous is honestly one of the closer ones um Pan's Labyrinth. Uh, mm. That one kind of counts a little bit, but it's not really horror. Of course, the Puppet Master movies. The Squad. I remember that one having such high atmosphere, but just did not execute very well. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that Dog Soldiers, like, there's not a lot of them, man. Death Watch is one that, that I mentioned mm -hmm. that's really good. Um, Jacob's Ladder mentioned that one already. Yeah, I, honestly, there's not very many of them, but I like the ones that there are. I would like to see more. That's why I'm like happy with this one. Like, I'll buy this on DVD. Yeah, I feel you. I think it's a cool genre. Yeah, just because you don't see it that much. Yeah. All right, so uh, I guess that's it. I have no idea what we're doing next week. Um, there's a couple of things out there. Uh, are there? Wait, are there any letterbox reviews? Oh my god, I forgot completely about uh, it. I thought... Sorry, I thought you were... Well, normally we do the letterbox reviews before our own ratings. Should have reminded me a little uh, earlier. Okay, well I reminded you at all, and you should be proud. <laughs> of that. Ghost of War. I think you should start doing these. I don't feel like having responsibility. Dude, you don't have any responsibility <laughs> in your... Wait, there, hold on, hold on. There's like no ratings on it. No reviews? Yeah, there's. I looked up all of them and there's like three and they're pretty much bad. <laughs> there's a. Uh, I'll, I'll just read the. I can do it if you, if you want. There you go. Okay. Uh, so Griffin Schiller, he just uh, clicked. Um, yeah, there's he, only three. <laughs> yeah, he just made a cringe face and that's all. He put no rating for it. And we have Josh Bell, who did a one and a half star rating, and it says, Imagine if that scene from the butterfly effect where Ashton Kutcher wakes up with no arms was the entire movie. Huh. <laughs> okay. Huh. That's, That's kind funny. Of interesting. Yeah. <laughs> and then Jimmy's official gave it two stars. Classic zero payoff movie. Yeah, we should mention that this, I don't think it's out. Um, besides on direct TV yet. Oh yeah. Okay. That makes Cause sense. Cause we then. got early access to a screener here. Yeah. I think it's more worth it watching them with those people say, but Hey, whatever. Mm -hmm. I would agree. Yeah. That's kind of harsh. Okay. So, uh, with that said next week, don't know what we're doing. Um, I'll look into what's out there and, uh, yeah. So I guess that's it. Yeah. All right. Talk to you guys next time. Peace.